I think because you're muted and you're not saying anything. <laughs> Hey, Amber. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, you want to bring up your slides? Do you have slides? Sometimes I do. Slides, I, I do have slides. This one, uh, this year, I was not going to be able to do without slides. It wouldn't have made a lot of sense. How do you, how do you share slides of them being presented? So go in and hit the little share screen. Um, you can change your slides to present mode and then share your screen. There you go. Does it work if I hit play now? Does that yeah, work? That works. Okay. All right. Try and keep on schedule. <laughs> Well, you know, we have lunch coming out after you. So if you want to stick around, because everybody enjoys the little chit chats, if you'd like to stick around for a few minutes after you finish your talk, we'll pick your brain a little bit. But until that point, folks, welcome to Zeke Week 2021. We have Seth Hall, who's going to talk about uh, building Zeke with static plugins included. So with that, Seth, tell folks who may not be familiar with who you are a little bit about yourself and the floor is yours. Thanks, Amber. Um... Seth Hall. i am um, been a Zeek developer for about 15 or 16 years now. Um, I wrote, I've written tons and tons of Zeek scripts. I mean, Vern was just showing uh, the Mandelbrot script I wrote. That one was a lot of fun. Um, uh, one of the Corelight co-founders as well. Um, so yeah, this, this static plugin thing came from uh, just a little bit of pain that I had run into at, at one point. But what I want to talk about first is, is I, I realized I couldn't really do this presentation without first talking about what exactly is a plugin to, to start with. Um, so what is a Zeek plugin? Primarily, it's a way to provide uh, extended, effectively extension C++ code to Zeek that is not built into the original source code, but that, that can be maintained externally. And there's a, there's a whole range of what that means. And, and I figured I would talk about that just a little bit. Um, the, the sort of some, some of the like things that typically you, you as a user would experience in terms of plugins are things like protocol analyzers or file analyzers or um, things like input framework readers, logging writers, all of that kind of stuff like are the things that are built in, they're all, they're all plugins in Zeek, like the, um, the file, the, the writer that is effectively the file writer, but in Zeek it's called the ASCII writer. Um, or the input framework reader plugins for things like uh, the config framework is, is an input reader or just reading, reading log file format files into Zeek is another one. The, the main categories of um, plugin types are components, which are, that's, that's like the really important one. And that's where most people will experience Zeek plugins. Um, hooked extensions, which I'll talk about in just a second, and um, built-in functions, where it's effectively just you want to have a, a new, a, or they're typically called diffs in Zeek. Um, but what it will end up being is basically a script land Zeek function implemented in C++. That's, that's effectively all it is. So they tend to get used for either performance sensitive things or interfacing with uh, libraries. Uh, you know, like like C or C++ libraries. Um, so the component types, and this is again, the part I said that most people, the way, the way that you would uh, experience Zeek plugins, this is the list, I just ripped it right out of the source code for Zeek, the, the list of um, plugin types. Um, and actually, I don't know why the uh, comment for reader and writer say not currently used, but... Uh, Yes, for some reason it says that. I'll have to look into why, why it does. Um, and also I should point out that Tim Wotulowitz has been uh, dutifully re-ripping this code all apart. So I have no idea what this code actually looks like today as, as he's been pulling it apart and rebuilding it. But you can see things here, IO source, um, that's packet ingestion. So things like the AF packet plugin that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Session adapter, that's actually, Tim, Tim talked about the session adapter stuff a little bit ago, I believe. 
Uh, but things like analyzer, oh, uh, packet analyzer, file analyzer, all of those type of things, they all connect in as components. And they, it's sort of like, you can think a list, it's like a list of functionality sort of aimed at a certain area, like protocol parsing. And that's like, this gives you the ability to like add a new item to that list where you're like, okay, Zeek has this many protocol parsers. And then in your plugin, you say, now it has a new one, that kind of stuff. The plugin hooks are some weirder part. Uh, it's, it's some deeper, deeper magic with Zeek. Uh, what these effectively do though, is let you as an external developer kind of really dig around in Zeek's guts through these uh, little extension hook points where you can say something like when a function is called, I want to hook into every time a function in the script is called, let, let me know. And I will decide if I want you to go ahead and, and allow that function to be called, or let me hook into when a log write happens. Like every time a log write happens, I want to hook into that, do, do something of my own in C++. Or when an event is queued, I want to do my own thing. All, all of that kind of stuff is all available. And these release to release, they don't tend to be uh, big, like sort of banner features, um, but the, these do, these plugin hooks kind of have been evolving for a number of years to add just little things here and there as, as the realization that something might be needed comes up. So these are just some of the example plugins out in the world. Uh, the AF packet plugin, packet source that uh, Jan Grosshofer wrote is a hugely popular one that a lot of people write, uh, use that um, someone earlier, I think, believe pointed out. Um, MITRE created the HTTP2, HTTP2 analyzer. Um, hopefully someday that'll just be rewritten and spicy. If uh, Murad is listening and wants to do that, that'd be cool. Uh, spicy itself has a plugin. So in because spicy is a separate thing, so if you want to run spicy analyzers in Zeek, you have to have the spicy plugin for Zeek. And it, again, it's just an analyzer. It provides um, protocol analyzers. Like it, it provides protocol analyzer components in, into Zeek. Um, and then Christian Krybik, who talked just a little bit ago, uh, wrote the Zeek community ID plugin. And that does some stuff in C++ and, and makes that available. So a lot of these, uh, I think all of these are component plugins, which is primarily what you see out, out in the world, like in, in terms of uh, Zeek plugins. And this is awesome. And it's been around, uh, it's been around for quite a while at this point, seven, eight, nine years, something like that. Like Robin built all of this uh, plugin infrastructure out in Zeek quite a while back. And it's been here for a long time and people have really started to take advantage of it, which is super great. Like all of the, the different plugins for packet sources and all the plugins for protocol analyzers and all of this stuff. The problem is why does it make your life hard sometimes? <laughs> and the, the, I don't know how often people run into this. And I know people don't tend to upgrade like their Zeek deployments, you know, constantly. And we don't do releases every day. So it's, it's not one of these like ever present problems which in some ways makes it worse. It's a problem that comes up for you once a year or once every six months or even once every three months, just infrequently enough to, uh, to cause pain. So here was this nice world that you sat in prior to, to, prior to plugins. You sat in this really nice world. It was just Zeke sitting there. And you could write scripts and you knew they would run in that Zeke. It, 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 it had what Zeke has. But then we added the plugin infrastructure and suddenly you had things like AF packet source and you're like, great, I can build that thing outside of Zeek. I can dynamically hook it in um, and, and it links in at runtime. So like Zeek starts up and it finds this plugin and goes, I'm gonna load in that shared object for it. And it says, okay, now I've got this new functionality and it loads in some scripts to support that uh, infrastructural sort of like bridging support between the uh, shared object and Zeek. And it loads all that stuff in, and now you've you've arrived in this new world, and everything is really happy. You're running Zeek 4.0, 4.0.4, I think is the current release, and you've got AF packet. Life is good, everything works. But then one day you upgrade to Zeek 4.1, and Zeek doesn't start anymore. <laughs> And the reason Zeek doesn't start is when it went to load that shared object, um, it may not work anymore. We may have changed things in Zeek that no longer make that shared object compatible. But from your perspective, you installed Zeek. Let's say, 
maybe today you only had that one uh, plugin installed, but let's say a year, two years from now, you've got 10 plugins installed. Now your deployment is actually getting kind of complicated because realistically, every time you upgrade, you might have to rebuild all of those plugins, which means having all their source trees around, being ready and prepared to rebuild them all. And this is solvable. A lot of people have solved this through automation, which is great. And yet <laughs> there's a lot of people that don't have it automated and they get burned by it. Um, so what could we do to fix it? What if we made Zeke a little bigger? <laughs> Sorry, I had to make it really big to, to do this. What if the AF packet plugin was in Zeek? Um, and, and the title of the talk may give you an idea of where this is going. So before on the previous slide, remember it said AF packet plugin shared object. Uh, this is no longer a shared object. In this model, what we're actually talking about is the AF packet plugin is linked into Zeek exactly the same way that all the bits and pieces of Zeek itself are linked into Zeek. So the reason that I believe that, that this, Robin did something cool. So sorry, Robin, I'm, I'm going to brag on you for a while and say you did a great job on this. When Robin originally built it years ago, he built it where these dynamic external plugins were exactly the same as internal plugins. So I don't know if anyone's picked up on this before, but um, if you run Zeek-N, and I'm sure someone out there is running it right now, you will see uh, plugins that Zeek has in it. Well, a lot of those plugins will say built-in at the end. It'll be all the analyzers are plugins. Um, and there's several other things that are built as plugins and it'll show up and it'll say built-in. But structurally, those built-in plugins are so close to these external dynamic plugins. They're almost, they're those really, really minor differences between them, like inconsequentially minor differences. And uh, so we said, okay, what can we just do this? So that if someone says, look, I want like my bespoke build of Zeek and I want it to have the AF packet plugin in it, but you don't want to like fork Zeek and like cram the AF packet plugin in, Oh yeah, so here, so I, okay, I guess the point I was making here was uh, you go from Zeek 4 and you build it and it has a packet plugin and then you upgrade to 4.1 and you just rebuild Zeek, but it just also builds the AF packet plugin in again. But in order to make this really interesting to work, we have to have a fairly elegant mechanism to, to make this all come together in the end, because if it's, if it's not, you're just sort of shuffling deck chairs around and making a new problem and solving an old one. Old one. We don't know yet. It's, it's possible we've made a new problem, but <laughs> we'll find out. So what I wanted to do real quick, it is the developer track. I wanted to just show an example really quickly. Uh, so this is functionally what it looks like when you're um, going to, to, to build a plugin in. So I built in, in this case, the AF packet plugin and the Zeek community ID plugin. Um, you use this new option that was in Zeek 4.1. It's in 4.1, that's when that's when this showed up. I guess I should point that out, that this feature showed up in Zeek 4.1. Um, it's dash dash include dash plugins. And the, the sort of tricky thing here is that if you're going to include multiple, you have to enclose it in the double quotes uh, because it is semicolon separated between the different plugin directories. So these are basically directories where I cloned those plugins and then I'm pointing to those directories saying, hey, build those in. And if Zeek manages to find them, you'll see down at the bottom. So after the configure step, you see at the bottom, it says built-in plugins, Zeek AF packet plugins, Zeek community, community ID, which means it found those plugins. It goes, yes, there's a plugin there. I'm going to build it in and that's it. And then it's just a normal build at that point. You, you literally just build it and those plugins are in there. And if you run um, Zeek dash N on that built um, binary, do you see on the right side how it says built-in? Um, if those were linked in as normal plugins where you like had your Zeek build and then you built the plugin and pulled it in, those would say different stuff. They wouldn't say built in. I forget what exactly the wording there is. But anyway, I know it's not a live demo, but I only had 20 minutes. So it's, uh, this, this worked really well. Um, so there's, there's two little bits here that are possibly a little, a bit tricky and Christian has brought up the potential problems with these, but we, we went ahead and did it. And, and I don't know if this is going to bite us later or not. Um, 
it, it, it does make a couple of assumptions that we don't exactly clarify in plugins that we, we don't explicitly like make it the, it has to be this way in plugins. Like someone could implement it differently, but we assume that plugin specific CMake files are located in the CMake directory of the plugin. And we assume that plugin scripts are located in the scripts directory of the plugin. It's possible using ZKG that you can put this stuff other places. If you want it to work with the built-in plugin stuff, that's where these things have to be at the moment because we don't, we, this is an area we may continue developing to integrate Zeek and ZKG behaviors a little more tightly, but they're not really tightly integrated right now. But generally, if you look at all the plugins that are out there right now, this is the general pattern they follow. And there is a bug in it right now. <laughs> Uh, there is a bug where if you have a plugin that uses an external library, like uh, I, I can't even think of a library off the top of my head right now, but if it uses an external like um, like a shared object library, those work, but there's a bug in it right now where it doesn't link them in correctly. And just from a reference perspective, I put the little section down at the bottom that in your CMake list.txt file, that's how you work around it in Zeek 4.0 and 4.1. Or, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in Zeek 4.1. Um, I'm hoping to get this fixed uh, really soon so that it'll be in, a, uh, in an upcoming release. It might not be until five, Zeek 5, though. Um, anyway, looks like I hit time. And uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer questions or whatever. Seth, thank you so much for that talk. It's always good to see your what presentation style and to whatever topic you're speaking about and three, whatever you're ad-libbing in there. It's all, it's, you know, it's always fun to, to see. Um, I'm sure folks have some questions for you over in uh, Slack, but since we are up at lunchtime right now, I thought I would just pick your brain on something other than what you've just talked about. Um, yesterday, you know, I was asking folks what were there's, you know, to include yourself, what was the most painful lesson you learned and you, you happily shared your 80,000 email story. Um, to everyone but what is something that you have and been doing this for 15 plus years and been around the community and also you know as a co-founder to core light and a longtime ZKL team member what is an ask that you have of the community and what would you like to see um, the community uh, doing more of and we've already talked about testing we've already talked about packages you know those type of things but what would you like to see well, um, I'm not even sure if I need to ask for anything because uh, uh, Seth the other day, um, Seth, the other Seth, not me. Seth Grover. Seth Grover. Uh, so Seth, if you're listening, by the way, I was so excited when another Seth did a major script contribution the way you did. I guess I should say content contribution. That was awesome. But uh, yeah, like that kind of stuff. I mean, that's huge because... It makes it uh, so that other people don't have to go through that pain. I mean, that's where like the community stuff comes in, where someone just comes along and does it. I mean, I mean, that's the uh, the biggest thing is just taking ownership for not only the stuff that you built, but for the stuff that other people built. Um, I remember when I when I first started working on Zeek at uh, the International Computer Science Institute, and that was like my full time job. I was really hesitant for the first like three or four months because I felt like I was ripping apart something someone else had built. And, uh, and, and I, I hope Seth Grover felt the same thing where he was sort of like, you know, just prodding at stuff. A lot of other people built and just said, it's okay. What I'm doing, I believe in myself enough to know that what I'm doing makes things better and you just do it. And um, yeah. That's the biggest thing is I, I love not having to ask for anything that people just show up. It's amazing. Well, for those that don't know, Seth Grover um, had posted in the packages channel on uh, the Zeke Slack workspace that he had updated about 17 um, scripts, plugins um, that didn't work with 4.1, but now do because he just took it upon himself to do. Um, so if you haven't seen that contribution one, uh, check out the packages uh, Slack channel. Um, on the Zeke Slack workspace, and you'll see the exact reference that Seth Hall is referring to in reference to Seth Grover. Um, we do have, and, an and, and also, if you're one of the people to which to which Seth Grover sent a uh, pull request, merge it and do a new release. 
Yes, please do. Um, we do have a couple questions for you. Sure. Uh, one is, what do you want for Christmas? Smoot is curious about that. I have no idea. It's an, uh, that's that's an, a nearly Smoot unlike question. Had too many well, words in like it. You, another laser engraver and like what what, <laughs> what thing are you like what thing are you working on these days? I have no idea. I got a I got a resin 3D printer recently, but I already got that. So <laughs> well, what are you thinking with it? Uh nothing, just trash. Oh <laughs> that's what that's what 3D printers are for mostly. Consumer 3D printers primarily make trash. <laughs> Fun trash. You, you Something learned. to. <laughs> well, since you're not asking for anything, you you don't even want anything for Christmas. You're not even asking what the community can do or let, nothing like that. What is? I gotta hear this from you. That when you think about all your experience in the in the Z community and and all like the little antidotal things and lessons learned not only from you but for others that you've interacted with. What's that one thing that still makes you just shake your head and laugh? Like you're just like, wow, I can't believe this actually happened. That is appropriate. And, and you well, can't well, I, I, I think this is one. Um, I think that uh, there, there's a group of us. I think that um, Johan and I have talked about this and Christian has talked about it before. Mm -hmm. But the, the fact that the fact that, that we've this this language, Zeke uh still exists and is growing it just is infinitely amusing i think to all of us because it's a quirky language it's a, like like christian was saying earlier it's a i think it was christian um it's a domain specific language that is like loaded with quirks because that's almost like what domain specific languages are they they're just quirks everywhere not 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 bad quirks in some ways but like they fit they you know they have stuff that like fits the, the use case because they're specific to their domain. And uh, yeah, the fact that it's, uh, what year is it, 2021? <laughs> and uh, we're still going is, is sort of infinitely amusing and kind of feels awesome. Well, you know, I, I know that you and I sort of talked like, I think almost, oh gosh, almost three years ago now, I first tried to install Zeke and I got all these like certificates. <sighs> And things like that. And I remember I called you up. I was like, I'm never doing this again. Why would anybody want to do this? And then, you know, I was able to talk to Ashish and some other folks and even you, you're like, no, do it this way. Don't do it that way. What, what would be the thing that you would tell folks who are new to Zeke? Like, is it, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, obviously don't give up, keep trying, uh, you know, don't worry about the mistakes you make, those type of things. But is there any like, nugget of wisdom that you would tell those new folks that has not been addressed already by other folks? I don't know. I don't know if things have been addressed by other people, but uh, I don't know. A big thing is, is don't worry about asking stuff. Like if, if it feels like a dumb question, it's usually fine. I, I feel like a lot of times I've asked a lot of these dumb questions <laughs> because <laughs> granted at this point, it was like years ago, but I think even now I still uh, ask a lot of dumb questions, but it's, it's okay. Like, it, it, I don't know. I, but I like approaching a lot of things that way where you just don't worry about stuff too much. You know, one of the things that I think when I go back and even people point me back to some of your older scripts or things that you've done with Zeke as a language, for example, like you have written a game with, you know, Zeke, uh, the, the language. Would you like to see other people kind of test Zeke outside what it's <laughs> for? What would, what would be something? I love every time I see people doing weird stuff. <laughs> and, and I will never say that any of that stuff is a good idea. No. Never. No, it's it's probably a terrible idea, but I mean, who cares? It's just playing around, fun, and it doesn't matter. I, I've been trying to do a computer science degree in Zeek. Not really. I mean, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. I asked you one time, what was the reason behind that? And you said, just because I could. Like, I was curious, you know, what would be something that you might think that somebody in the community could do just because they could, that really isn't about cybersecurity, but something fun and exciting that you would like to see somebody do. Anything? I mean, that's you hard, were because that's hard because I tend to write that stuff. But every time I see, uh, 
I see someone said Zork and Zeke. Okay, I'll go into detail on that. The problem is that there is not yet, and this is actually topical for the, the talk I just did. Um, there's not a mechanism in Zeke to read standard in. I've never, like, like, I can't communicate with it. Like, I can't hit, like, the left arrow. I haven't made, like, a game because I, I can't at runtime communicate with it. It could totally be implemented. just haven't done it yet. So I'm now I'm waiting for someone to make a, uh, like, a joystick plug-in or something. You can do, like, I want, I want to see an Xbox, pl Xbox controller plug-in. <laughs> Zeke, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, so any any users of Zeke or gamers out there that want to help, you know, Seth with his wish here, please, like, let's let's make him. I don't happy. have to. I don't have to be involved. I just want to play it. <laughs> well, obviously, you're gonna have to do something with it once somebody does it. So I think Seth is volunteering to test your game theory out. If you want to write games in. Uh, Somebody yeah, needs to write, there needs to be an SDL plugin. Oh, yeah, actually, just an S, a nice SDL plugin. Input through packets. Netcat, have Zeke monitor it. I've thought of all those. They seem like terrible options. But <laughs> where could you go? How much fun could you really have with this in addition to all the professional stuff that needs to be done? And and and, and I think people... My, really my, my experience has always been the difference between playing like this and professional stuff is uh, not a lot of difference because a lot of times um, interesting stuff tends to come from just messing around uh, where you're messing around. And like, I mean, the, the worst thing from an attacker's perspective that a defender could do is unexpected analysis. Like if, like if, for instance, let's say someone creates an SDL plugin in Zeek and it's like, you can now make like video games in Zeek, which makes no sense. It's, it's stupid. But with, with like, if we sort of suspend belief for a minute and believe that that's there, um, isn't a it, it, what, what is the next thing that gets built on top of that in terms of like game? I, I know I don't like I don't know how this would work because it's all sort of very fuzzy and stupid. But uh, would a would an attacker ever expect that a defender is playing a game where they're actually catching real attackers? Like, I know this is like people have tried all this or whatever, but like, it still begs the question. Like, an attacker is never going to expect that. They're going to expect that everyone does a series of things, and you know, at best, uh, go out and. Um, you know, shovel all of their logs and some analysis pile and look at it. And they're going to make more logs. Like, that's the best case. The worst case is the defenders don't even exist, where the attackers just don't even care because the defenders aren't there. But I don't know. The, the defenders looking at stuff in different and weird ways is exciting. Gamification of, of you know, uh, incident response and, and you know. I've never played a game, and I think it would be hard, but... Uh -oh, do we have I, like, I like that people are trying to come up with concrete mechanisms for how this would actually work now in the chat. See, uh, all these ideas stem from a conversation. So, you know, maybe you should put more of your wish list out there and a year from now we can see what, what, what's been created in, in all of I this. I don't know my wish list, though. That's the problem. I said all this stuff. I'm going to forget it as soon as we hang up. I oh, know we've got it, you know, immortalized here. Like it's going to live in perpetuity on this, you know, this recording. The recording might not make the, uh, you know, the YouTube channel, but I'll have the outtakes. So we will be able to play it back a year from now. What were we talking about? I already forgot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> here. So, well, folks, we've got about probably 15 or so minutes before we come back uh, with Christian uh, Krybeck and he'll be speaking after lunch. So Seth, thanks for playing along. Thanks for your, you know, awesome talk as always. And then for chatting with me for a few, breaking up the, breaking up the break time, if you will. Um, but we'll be back after lunch. And I think you even have a uh, lightning talk after, uh, after Christian's session. So we'll be. I've been prepared for it. Whoa, I feel privileged. <laughs>
prepared for a lightning talk that doesn't happen very often. Normally it's as you're walking up to the podium for a lightning talk, you're finishing your slides. So, um, and for those who are listening that are going to be giving a lightning talk, it is going to be a strict five minute time limit. And I, when you see my happy face, come on and say, thank you. That's it. Like you're just, it's going to end. It's five minutes. Um, so be prepared for that. So you might want to, in your 15 minutes, uh, Seth, you might want to rehearse that. Otherwise I'll be cutting you off at five minutes. So. No, I'm, I'm going to finish in three. Oh, oh, all right. Let me make a note of that. We'll, we'll see. So folks, we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Thank you so much. And uh, Seth, we'll see you in about 40 minutes on the next call. Thanks, Amber. Thanks.